here. Recording has started. Welcome to the May 15th study hall. Continuing the topic of personalizing the passages in critical reasoning. And just to make sure, if you don't know what I'm referring to by personalizing the passages, then for the more detailed intro, go ahead and check out the recording of last week's session, which is going to be May 8th. But the basic idea of what we're talking about here is that whenever a passage has to do with the actions of people or businesses, you can get more, you can, you can get better insights by adopting the perspective of the entity or a person whose actions matter most. I mean, if that's not a possible thing, then the next best way to personalize the passage is to make it a dialogue of some sort that is an actual lively conversation. But these these slides, we've selected some, some problems where you can actually take the viewpoint of a certain entity and go from there. And if you saw the session last week, you, you'll know, I mean, there's a considerable variety to what that entity might be. It might be a person, it might be an animal, it might be a corporate entity. It might be a lot of different things. So we'll see as we go, but there are lots of different perspectives they might choose to adopt here. And then there is the copyright notice. There it is. These problems today are all from the free part of the GMAT prep software, which is copyright and intellectual property of GMAC. Okay, don't forget your multiple choice answers are there. That's where they are. Okay, let's do a problem. Let me go ahead and pull one up. Let's try one. How about... How about this one right here? And remember where those multiple choice answers are found. There they are. I'll give you a little bit of time for this one. Okay, time's about to beep here. If you are still making some sort of definite progress with this, then it doesn't take a little bit longer, but if you are honestly stuck, then time to pick something that is a thing. Okay, still a couple of you guys who don't have choices picked. There's Abhishek, Kyle, Nipur, and then a couple of people who are not um, logged in right now. But okay, let's, let's go ahead and start talking about it. So remember the idea is this is all about people's actions, and in this case it's also about people's perspectives on others. So one thing, I mean, what you should do with these things, it's not going to be the same from student to student, but what you should do is you should play around a little bit with different orders in which to read these things and process them. And in general, you, you always want to read the question first, no matter who you are and no matter what you're doing, because this is where you get goals from. You know, if you haven't read the question, then it's very difficult to understand what's, what's going on at all. So, but once you have a goal and you understand what you're trying to do in general, here's, here's something you might want to try to do as opposed to your traditional just reading it through once and then going from there. Something you may want to try, which is, this is sort of a mirror of how I would personally scan these things if I were going through them. It doesn't mean you have to do it, it's just something you might want to try. Where first you read the question, and that gives you a goal. It's like when you read an encyclopedia article, you don't just read straight through it. You go look for something that is a thing that you can look for. Same sort of thing here. Find a goal, concrete goal, something to look for. 
And then what I would do with a situation like this, not not with passages that are entirely about weird scientific abstractions and stuff, but at least stuff like this where it's corporations and people and, you know, basically human interaction of some sort or another, is I would browse the passage and see who the, the players are, so to speak. And then I would make some sort of I would make some sort of attempt to decide whose actions or perspective is most important to the outcome. And then I would think about reading more slowly and carefully from that perspective. So this is something worth trying. I mean, at least try it on and see if it works for you. It, all of this is ultimately a matter of take what works for you and leave what doesn't. But let's do this. So we, we're thinking about some sort of compromise that's, that's described here. So we'll figure out what that is later. But we need to basically justify a plan that, that is going to be stated in the thing. So who are the players? in this in this paragraph. We're not reading this totally thoroughly just yet. We just want to see who is involved. So who or what entities are involved here. So you've got executives. You have the corporations themselves. You also have external businesses. Let's just go ahead and highlight some of these things that are in here. And then don't forget the employees within the corporation itself. So you've got executives, you've got external businesses, and presumably the people in those businesses, which are who those people are the outsiders. But then when you say within their corporations, those are also players, because within the corporations implies the insiders of the corporation, as, as Crack It is saying there. So now, whose perspective here is going to matter? And there may be more than one answer to this, but Even if you haven't totally read every word with rapt attention yet, you can still see this is a passage about how the executives are perceived, both inside and outside the corporation. So whose, whose point of view are we ultimately concerned with here at the end of the day? So there's the perspective of other people in the corporation. And then there is also the perspective of the outsiders. The perspective of the executives themselves basically is marginal. It doesn't really matter because th that's not the issue here. So whose perspective matters is the question. So there's going to be two entities whose perspectives do matter. Those are employees within the corporation, who some of you guys are calling them insiders. And then there's also outsiders. The other issue is because now if you're browsing it, you can think about whose perspective is going to matter more here. So where is the controversy? Like, well, who's, which of these perspectives is presented as pretty much one-sided and not really much subject to debate? So, and if you're not sure, you could always just throw both of these perspectives at the answer choices, but you can be more efficient if you realize whose perspective is really going to be the one under debate here. And I mean, we, we, this is where we can read from both perspectives and just kind of see what happens. Okay, so let's do that. Like, if we are reading as internal employees, there's this potential issue of making a rigid hierarchy that gets in the way of communication. So that seems to create some cognitive dissonance or some sort of issue. 
But then, if you read from the perspective of outsiders, this seems all pretty straightforward and one-sided. Like, a title can facilitate the executive's dealings with you guys, the outsiders. You guys are, are unilaterally helped by the use of the title. So, when you read this more carefully, it becomes pretty clear that the perspective of the outsiders does matter, but it's not really a controversial thing. So, the use of a title will definitely help. Um, the outsiders. So they're, they're good. So really, it's the perspective of the, of the inside employees that's going to matter here. So let's go ahead and read these things from the perspective of internal employees. So the perspective is we don't want to use the titles in the corporation. That'll get rid of this potential issue. So we need further support here. We need another reason from the standpoint of internal employees. Like, why else would it be good? So another thing that can help for you to do is to create a concrete question that you can toss at the answer choices, just so you can keep a goal in your head. So a concrete question that you can throw at the choices, is this plan a benefit for internal employees? Or also the other way to support something besides showing that it benefits them is to also show that it doesn't hurt them. So does it not hurt internal business in a way that it potentially might. Because that's always a thing, too, right? I mean, if you stave off a potential problem, that, that's just as good as actually having an extra benefit. So, right, so Angelica says, from employee perspective, yeah, right, that, that, that's a problem when you're thinking about this. Because you're thinking, you know, I mean, employees inside the corporation, they don't live in a bubble. So, you know, when you read this, again, the more, like, if you think about this from the standpoint of an actual employee, you're going to think, you know what, guys, I'm not stupid. I mean, even if they pretend not. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> the same, exact same thought. And when you think from that standpoint, a lot of you will have that thought, too. Like, they're, you know, they, they might take that, that four-word title off of their name tag. You know, they might just be... Susan, instead of like VP of marketing operations, but but we still know that when they go out off campus that they're using these titles, right? So that might be a thought that you have. So if you have that thought, that's going to be what they go for here. But even if you don't, you still have this concrete question that you can throw at the choices, right? So only small corporations can preserve an atmosphere of mutual respect and high regard, blah, 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 blah. Um, what does this mean to, and then the question that you will always, always hear me throw at everything when it comes to critical reasoning, what does this mean to a 10-year-old? There's a lot of big words in choice A. What does this mean to a 10-year-old? Can anybody explain that to me? Uh, as a 10-year-old, I definitely don't know what out of scope means. I mean, that's one phrase that, honestly, as, as a longtime moderator on the forum, I get a little bit irked by seeing people throw that phrase around so much because it, it's not a particularly helpful phrase in, in the sense that I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but when people say out of scope, um, they mean one of two things by that. The first thing they mean is anything that's not written in the question, which is unfortunately an incorrect perspective. I mean, a lot of things that are essential are not actually mentioned. So if people, if people say out of scope to mean strictly what has been brought up, that, that's not workable. The other way people use it is to mean anything that is relevant at all, but then the problem is you wouldn't know what was in or out of scope unless you already knew how to solve the problem. So meaning this whole phrase out of scope is kind of jargon that doesn't terribly help anybody. So I would, I would suggest staying away from it and, and staying with stuff that your fourth grader would understand. 
So, yeah, what that means is if, if you know, I mean, inferiority is still kind of a big word, but we're getting there. Yeah, I mean, they don't, I like the way that Angelica puts it, where, and, and I can I can make it, I can take what she writes and make it even simpler by saying that, because I mean, rigid corporate hierarchy here, that refers to using what things. What is that in one word? That means using titles, yeah, titles. Not just structure, but specifically the titles that we are actually arguing about here, right? So what choice A means is that is that medium and big sized companies need titles. So this choice goes exactly the way that you don't want it to go, because we are talking about not using them. You know, or at least not explicitly using them. So this is this is black when we want white kind of thing. Um, B is it's probably even more clear without even rephrasing choice B that it's the wrong way as well because B says that using a title will actually create additional respect among insiders, which is again a reason to use titles. We're supposed to be justifying a compromise in which titles are not used. So this is, to say the least, far from ideal. C says, even if you know that they use them off campus, you don't care. It's not going to rub you the wrong way. So in other words, there's not going to be negatives from uh, from outside use of titles. Yeah, and then that's Angelica, that's almost what you exactly predicted earlier. So this is definitely the choice that we want. Because it staves off, it's not necessarily an extra benefit as much as it, 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 it rules out a way that would potentially hurt internal business. As far as D, D is a lot like A. I mean, here we are back to cheerleading for the idea of using titles again. Like, just basically, in terms of how would I explain this to a fourth grader, I would just write that. Titles equals good. And then E, although many of them don't like them, the vast majority have no qualms. Well, these, this is the people whose perspective we don't particularly care about. Because it's not, it's not the perspective of the executives that matters here at all. It's, it's how everybody perceives. It's how everybody else perceives the executives. So, but notice what, what is the most important step of this, at least from, from the way I'm constructing it in my own head, at least, and from what I've seen work for a lot of students, is answering questions like this one. You know, which is not going to be any sort of it's not a rigorous, methodical thing, and so you're not really going to see it represented as such in things like books and strategy guides, but it, it, because it's particular to these questions where you're actually considering human interactions and so forth. But make sure that you take the time to think about this whenever it comes to any questions like this. So nice. Any questions about this, feel free to put them in the chat box. If not, let's take a look at another one. Let's see. How about... Hmm, if you guys hear a snorting noise next to me, then that would be a French bulldog. How about this quest? right here. Go for it. Not quite as many words in this one, so I'll give it a little bit less time on the timer. There you go. Okay, again, if you're still, if you have a concrete goal and a, and a solid perspective, then you can keep working here for a little bit. If not, then let's hit it and quit it pretty soon.
Okay, so I don't normally put answer choices selected on the board, but this is this this has an interesting bimodal distribution type of thing here. Here's the choices that you guys picked. It's basically, I mean, a lot of people have non-responses here, but mostly people are picking the first two choices. So those are going to be the ones that we'll spend more of the time talking about here. But what is, I mean, if you read the question first, this, this doesn't, this is not terribly specific, but at least you know that you're going to be looking at it's the same kind of thought process as weakening something or trying to pick out holes in it. So what what would make the what would make someone's case better or worse here? So now let's talk about what's happening in this thing and, and see whose perspective is going to be a thing. Um, you have a columnist, but the columnist has an opinion about this, so that's a perspective. Who else? is a player here. In this whole situation. Which people. So while you guys are typing, who the question is who are the players? Like who is whose perspective should we adopt? To, yeah, right. So who's involved? I mean, really, you've got only two people here, which are the columnist, and then you have this big, long string of words. But this is basically people who might actually eat foods with this artificial fat. So um, there's not really much else in, in terms of perspective here. So whose whose perspective is definitely more invested here? So whose perspective should you adopt? If you yeah, you want to be the people, you want to be the patients who are going to be thinking about whether because the whole issue is about whether those people should put this stuff in their bodies, and that's that it's clearly an issue that is going to primarily affect them. So you should be the person who might eat this stuff. Um, the people who are advised to are the, I mean, there's there's one crowd of people that this, this artificial fat is targeted at. And those are, those are the people who's, I mean, if there's anyone else who might eat this stuff, then there's no controversy described here. So, I mean, even if this stuff might be eaten by random people, those those people's perspective is not particularly trenchant here because they, they don't face any issues. So, but okay. So be the person who might eat this stuff for, because they have been recommended to do so by medical advisors, doctors, dietitians, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So, okay. Now... Let's what what is the situation? Let, let's let's describe the situation in terms that are that are proverbial fourth grader would understand. And from the point of view of the potential consumer of the product. So What is that? So artificial fat is no good, well, but is it? Is it no good? I mean, let's go ahead and say pro and con here. I mean, because the big problem with paragraphs is that paragraphs are inherently not, not terribly organized. So, like, from the standpoint of the person who might consume this stuff, I mean, we do have pros and we do have cons. So it, it, it's not it's not accurate to say that the artificial fat is no good because here let's put these in different colors. Let's say pros are blue, and let's say cons are blue and pros are red. So Louisville colors are pro and Kentucky colors are con. Um, there are pros, right? The pro is that you can use it in normal food. And it, it has none of the supposed detrimental effects of normal fat. So I mean, basically, it, it's it's all it's good. 
they can be used normally and without certain bad things. You don't have to go into what those are. What's the bad? The bad is, so JSB puts it in terms of comparison there. Yeah, it's, it's good in the sense that it's better than, uh, I'll go ahead and just copy that and put it up there in, in the pro column. It's a pretty decent summary of it with the greater than sign there. So that is also in the pro column. All right. And then what about the con? What's the con? What's bad about it? The bad thing about it is that it absorbs, it, 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 it binds to them or whatever. It steals them from you. It steals some vitamins from you. In the same way that, you know, if, if you are pregnant and you have a fetus inside you, it leaches a lot of vitamins, and so you have to eat more of them kind of thing. So, right. Okay. So this is your concern. And, I mean, the pro is, is, is clearly a pro. So this is really going to be the issue for you, right? The issue is going to be what? Like, what are you going to think about? Because they are essential vitamins. They're not just random vitamins that might be sort of pro-salubrious, but you don't know for sure. I mean, that these are vitamins that you actually need. So what, what are you going to what are you going to think about here? And if you are the consumer, then you'll know right away that you have to think about this. Yeah, like let's just let's name these vitamins because I mean that way the more specific you make, the easier it's going to be to think about it. In the same way that you can personalize, you can also specify. I mean, let's say that it steals vitamin C. So in other words, if you the way things look right now, if you eat this stuff, you're going to get scurvy. You're not going to get any vitamin C. Oh, bad news, right? So, yeah, so you need to get it. You, 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 need, you need to see if you can get that. So and that's the key issue that you're going to recognize as the key issue is can I get back the vitamins that the artificial stuff steals? from me. Because if you can't replace those, this is definitely going to be a non-starter. If you can't, I mean, you can't, they're essential vitamins, meaning you can't live without them. So this is going to be the key issue. So this is a super, super specific question that you can throw at this stuff is at each answer choice, you can throw at the choices this question of, is this evidence that I can make up for the lack of vitamin C? That I can get back the vitamin C. So is a, and I mean, remember, it's in evaluating, which means you're going to get non-committal answer choices. You're going to get choices that don't go one way or the other. You're, you're, they're just going to raise the issue. So instead of saying, is this evidence that, it's, it's, it's more accurate to say, is this relevant to whether, because remember, you're not going to be saying yes or no here. You're just going to say, it's going to be raising issues that might pertain to this thing. So is this relevant to whether I can get back the vitamin C? I mean, it's in that same family as in response to the question in the box. It, it's in the same family as all that stuff. We can strengthen, evaluate, explain. They're all the same type of reasoning. So, well, A is basically asking this exact words. I mean, if you simplify this so that our, so that our hypothetical 10-year-old can understand it, this basically just means can I get back to vitamin C by supplementing with it? Ah, okay, well, that, that's definitely the choice that we want because it's pretty much the exact issue that we raised as soon as we adopted this point of view. 
which is pretty cool. I mean, if you are this person, you really can't not understand this, as long as you take the time when you read the passage to understand, oh, look, essential things are being stolen from me. And that's the only minus here. Other choices. What's the problem with choice B? And there's a couple of ways you could phrase this, but think about these. Think about the juxtaposition of these two things that I'm going to put in yellow. Think about the fact that both of those are in there. What are the vitamins that the fat steals from you are in the foods that have the fat in them? Like, what, if that's a thing, then what's going to happen to those vitamins? Who's, who's going to get those? Remember, you get this tug of war for these vitamins going on between you and Olestra or whatever, I guess artificial fat is on the market. I mean, because B, because A is saying, can you supplement in any way, shape, or form in order to, to make up for this? Presumably, you are not eating this artificial fat 24 hours a day or, or 35 hours a day or whatever. But um, you... Can you ever get it back ever at any point is what A is saying, which is the relevant question. Whereas B is talking about exactly the one time when you would not get it back. Because if you, um, yeah, it's what KN says. It doesn't matter. It's still going to steal it. Because, like, what, B is the only time, ironically, that it does not matter whether these vitamins are there. Because they are the vitamins that will be absorbed into, that will be stolen by the fat. So... The only time you would not want to consume these would be right then and there, would be in the foods that have the fat, because then they'll just get stolen by it. They'll, they'll bind it, and they'll take it away from you. You're not going to get it. So, yeah, you're, you're going to have to eat these vitamins. You're going to have to supplement when you are not also consuming the part of the fat. So B, the problem with B is that it addresses the wrong thing. It addresses when you're definitely not going to get these vitamins rather than when you could get them. C, I mean, you guys are typing some things. I'll wait and see what you type. We'll treat the other choices while you do that. Um, the low-fat diet is completely not the issue here because we're actually taking pains to make sure that people can eat fat. I mean, the whole point of this, if you think about it from this perspective, if you think about being this person, the only reason why you would even be considering this issue one way or the other would be because you don't want to eat a low-fat diet. It would be because you actually want to eat a diet with fat in it. And so you're you're debating whether to use natural fat or artificial fat. But this is not something that you're going to do if you're considering this issue. So this is C is, is exactly what you are not planning on doing, and so it's, it's not a thing. And again, if you are this person, you'll realize that. You'll be like, aha, I want, I want dietary fat. So now that's why this whole thing is an issue in the first place. Whether there are any foods that cannot be prepared, it, it says that there are, you know, in general, that it can be used. There may be exceptions on the margins, but as long as we know that it can generally be used in place of fat, then we're good. And then whether people can taste it, it might be tough nuts if it doesn't taste very good, but... The, the substance of the problem is, is health benefits and health drawbacks and the potential danger of having vitamins stolen from your body, not, not how it tastes. So, um, Joy says, but I shouldn't have fat, isn't it the precondition? I mean, it, it's, it's not, because if you think about what we're doing is... Um, They've been told to reduce fat intake, but what we're considering doing is instead of doing this, 
we're thinking about using this artificial fat, which is kind of like a cheat. It, it's like a workaround. It's like being able to eat fat without having the effect of it, which is what this red highlight here is. So meaning you don't, if, if this is a thing that works for you, then you do not have to eat a low-fat diet. And, that, and that's the point of it. The point of it is that it lets you still eat fat. And that's that's what you want to get when you read it. You want to, you want to get that it's a workaround. I mean, natural fats are what you're being told not to eat, but this new stuff, this new magic artificial fat, doesn't have the same negatives, and so it's not prohibited for the same reasons. Let me know if that makes sense. So we've got one or two people with some text in their text box. Um, Beth L, you've had some text in your text box for a while now. If you're actually typing something, then. I mean, okay, you're not. Um, yes, you are, I guess. All right. Um, let me, what if that has benefits? What if it does? And maybe you can tell me more of where you're going with that. Um, what if it does? Okay. But what if it doesn't? I mean, you, you can't make up something like that and then reason from it. Yeah, I mean, there's no indication that that is one way or the other. You can't just make it up. So, because if you counter with something like that, if you counter with something like, uh, what if it does, I can just respond to you with, well, what if it doesn't? So, that, that's not really an objection. You can't, you can't just make stuff up. Um, yeah, and, and you're still going to be getting fat anyway if you actually get the chance to use this stuff. But more importantly, you can't just raise random hypotheticals unless there is evidence for them in some way, shape, or form. So hopefully that helps. Okay, I think that's it for this question. No one is typing at this point. So let's throw another one at you guys. About not this. Something like this one you're gonna have to read perhaps a little bit more carefully because you have these you have some negatives in here and you have some the wording is a little bit, at least in, in my opinion, the wording is a little bit less clear than it is on some of these other pages. So let's take a look at it. Food basket and shopper king. Here's a timer for you. Go for it. Okay, we have uh, about 30 people in here and about 13 responders. So it take maybe 30, 40 seconds at most if you need it. But remember, if you are genuinely, if you're genuinely lost or sort of just wandering through the text at this point, then it's time to hang it up. But go ahead and pick something that is a thing. And just in case anybody needs a quick reminder of where the choices are located, that's where they are. All right, let, let's talk about it. In this case, the, the personal perspective thing here is, is pretty straightforward because there is only one player, really. Who is, who is that? It's going to be the shoppers at these grocery stores, right? So you be a shopper. Okay, you. So they, let's explain this in simple terms that our proverbial fourth grader would understand. Okay, they catch you on your way out of food basket store. Um and, you know, what I'm going to do here, I mean, grocery stores are different in pretty much every region of the country, but I'm, I'm going to use the names of two stores that exist where, or I, I, when I, I'm going to type Food Basket and Shopper King, but I'm going to think about 
real stores that exist where I'm at. So I would call them Ralph's and Trader Joe's. If you're in, you know, upstate New York, you could call it Price Chopper. If you're in the Bay Area, Safeway, whatever. But whatever it helps you actually think about this. Because if you think about stores where you actually buy stuff, then it'll help you think about it. So, but they catch you on your way out of a food basket store. And what do they do? Someone tell me in a lot fewer words than they do. What do they do with the stuff in your car? Okay, yeah, they they, uh, they look at what you buy, and they do what with it? Yeah, they, they compare prices of your stuff between food basket where you actually bought them, where you just and Shopper King, which is a different place. And then they find that you paid less, as it turns out. You paid less. I mean, they phrased it as the other store is more... But when you phrase it in terms of you as the shopper, that's not really how you're going to think about it. You're going to think about it as you saved money at the store where you bought them. Now, the, the, the thing is that, and it might take a couple of scans through that last sentence with the blank in it to really understand what you're even supposed to be doing here. But what you need to do, because the key words here are does not necessarily show that. So what we're doing is we're trying to destroy this perspective. So and if you give a name to the speaker who has a perspective, then it'll always help you counter that perspective. So someone give me a name. Like who is... Who's on a commercial? I mean, this could be something where a commercial actually shows you coming out of the store. And, you know, they stuff a microphone in your face and they say, hey, how much did you pay for these things? You know, it's like an advertisement thing. Who's talking? Give me a name. Uh, Jared. I mean, Jared from not Subway, but okay. Jared says, Jared from Food Basket says, this means you'll always save money at Food Basket. And you want to show that Jared is wrong. So you think, well, no, actually, blank. So you need something that's going to go in, in this. You, 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 you need something that's going to go in this blank. I mean, you can think of it as a weaken question. You can also think of it as explain. I mean, whatever it is. But the idea is, because, I mean, it, it's unquestionable that your items actually do cost less. So why might you not? I mean, the, the question is, Jared says that, that the prices across the board are less. You're saying he's wrong. So why might your items cost less, even though the price across the board doesn't, is not lower? I mean, if you can get the, the question into these words, it's probably pretty clear by this point what the deal is. You know, like, why might your items cost less even though items in general don't cost less? Well, you probably just buy the stuff that's on sale. Right? I mean, that's the whole point, right? You, 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 go, to the, you go to that store because certain things are actually... You buy them because they cost less. It's not they cost less because you buy them there. It's you buy them there because they cost less. But you're selectively buying stuff that's on sale. So 
So yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of the only possible reason because otherwise these statistics would contradict each other. Like the the only way that you could get this to happen would be if you do what at least in the, in the U.S. what probably most grocery shoppers do, which is you buy the stuff that is marked out. So let's look for that. So this is you look for markdowns on stuff and you go to whatever store had them. In other words, you, you go to the store where your preferred items cost less. That's exactly what we want. And again, if you take the perspective of the shopper here, this is a very complicated paragraph. There's a lot of stuff going on in this paragraph. There's a lot of words. And if you don't adopt the perspective of the shopper, this paragraph can get overwhelming and end with a quickness. But if you do adopt the perspective of the shopper, it's pretty pretty much okay to follow. You know, you can see what's happening here, and you can follow it without a ton of unnecessary pain and indignity. So this is the choice that we want. Let's take a look at the other ones. The shoppers with more than 20 items. Is this discrepancy the same way as they observed, or is it the other way? Yeah, this is the same direction. I mean, this is this is if you bought a whole ton of things, then the difference was even bigger, but it was the same way. So this is not going to show that it's actually the opposite. So B makes it like B is if Jared B makes Jared sound like he's right is the problem. And I mean, the biggest way for you to recognize that more quickly is to make a Jared. I mean, it really is a thing. If you give this person a name, then you will much more quickly realize when he or she is right or wrong. Because it's just, it's really hard to think about abstract, headless arguments that are not made by people. It's, it's, our brains are not terribly good at that. Whereas if you imagine Jared in front of you saying, hey, shop at Food Basket, everybody will save. I mean, B makes it look like he's right. A makes it look like he's wrong. And it's much quicker to make those realizations because you have a person with whom you are interacting. That's what our brains are best at. Many shoppers consider factors other than price. Well, that's nice, but the problem is that this is just a passage about price. Like we, don't, we don't care at all about non-price factors here. D... Variation from month to month, overall quantity. The problem is that overall quantity is not a thing because they just, they, they were asked what they had bought, but they were not segregated according to quantity. So that's another reason why B is wrong, too, because we don't care how many items people are buying. The easier reason to eliminate B is that it shows that Jared is right, but there's also the quantity issue, which is a non-thing. Same thing with D. And then E, I mean, E kind of goes to show that the survey is more likely to have been a fair survey. Like, it, it eliminates one source of bias in the survey, but it doesn't, it doesn't do anything as far as interpreting the results. It, it just shows that people taking the survey may not have had a vested interest, but that's not going to help you. Because you want to explain why the reality is white when the survey results say black, which E is not going to help you do. Okay. Any questions about this one? Again, notice the value of adopting the perspective, especially the more words are in the passage, the more important it is to adopt this perspective. And the more convoluted the statements are that contain the key question, the more important it is to do this. Because it's easier to boil it down. That whole simplifying step becomes much easier to do once you figure out a perspective that you can adopt. All right. Let's look at another one. What was the problem with B again? The problem with B again was two problems. The first problem is it goes totally the wrong way. Because remember, you are trying to make the case that Shopper King is not actually a savings across the board. And B makes it look like it is. Like B makes it, B takes Jared's point and just makes it even stronger, which is the opposite of what you want to do. 
if, if you have trouble seeing that, just make a Jared. Make a Jared in your head who is obnoxious and yelling at you in a commercial. And the more you do that, the easier it'll be to see this. Like, he's, he's yelling at you about how Food Basket is going to always save you money all the time, always. And B makes it look like he's right. It's not what we want. Mm, yeah, maybe, although 20 items versus the entire stock of a grocery store is still not. I mean, it's still a very small sample by comparison. So that, if that's a thing, then it's going to be a, a very weak signal against a lot of noise. Um, I mean, it does move the needle a tiny, tiny, tiny bit in that direction, but only a, a negligibly small bit. So, uh, I mean, grocery stores carry a lot of things. But, okay, let's take a look at another thingamajigger. How about that one? Notice, again, this is one of those things where you're, it's an accept question, which means that you're basically going to have four correct answers and one not correct answer, and your job is to pick the one that's actually not an answer. So... Give it a shot. Here's a timer. Have fun. All right. Let's go ahead and pick a thing that is a thing. And we'll take it from there. Okay, um, a new commercial radio station. So who are the players here? Whose perspective is the fulcrum of this whole thing? Which, which people? Um, as far as the question of can you personalize all of them, only if they have a personal perspective. So this we'll get back to the question in a second. The, the answer to your question is basically this. Like whatever the actions or perspectives um, of people or businesses are, are involved, then you can take that. I mean, there are some passages where, where these are not things. Like, for example, if you're looking at a per capita statistic and trying to tell why it's not the same as an absolute statistic, then that has nothing to do with personal anything. And if you're talking about, you know, proteins that are on asteroids that fell from Mars, then that's not really a truly personal standpoint thing either. So those are going to be tough. You can still personalize those by just pretending you're in some sort of dialogue, debate, conversation, whatever, and then you, you can attribute viewpoints to different people, but that's not as, as distinctly personal as what we're doing here. So, but these, I mean, these, these involve people and businesses, because you have, okay. So, all right, you've got, you've got the listeners, but there's another thing, too, which JSB was the only one who mentioned, which is also the advertisers. Notice the and here. I mean, you want to attract an audience. So you want this audience of people who are, you know, old like me. And then you want it's kind of a nice smack in the head that my high school music is that old. Um, and you want to also appeal to advertisers. So both of these people's perspective matters. And so what, it's, what, you're, what you're best off doing here is going through this thing twice. Because, you know, there's not as many words here, so you're not going to kill a whole lot of time by doing this. But if two or more distinct perspectives matter, then you can go through the passage more than one time. I mean, because it's best not to try to jump back and forth between perspectives because that kind of destroys the whole purpose of the personalizing. I mean, you can't, you know, unless you want to personalize it in a very schizophrenic sort of way. I mean, here you especially don't want to do that because you don't want to really be an advertiser and the person you're advertising to at the same time. 
So in in that one, the first question we did with corporate titles and stuff, if you weren't really sure that outsiders were were less important than insiders, you could have read that one twice, once for outsiders, once for insiders. Same sort of thing here. So let's do that. Um, let's read it from the standpoint of listeners. So if you are a listener, what does this mean to you? If you are the listener. What does that green underline mean? It means that you are actually going to do what? Yeah, you're going to tune in, right? So if you're the listener, then success means you'll tune in. So forget the advertisers. We'll do that later. So as far as the green thing goes, first read through. You be the potential listener. You be someone who is old like Ron. Um, the question you want to throw at the choices this time is, does this mean I'm going to listen? Is this a good reason why I might tune in to this station? So A means I really like that music. So A is definitely a thing that means I'm going to tune in. Now, and remember what that means is we're eliminating it. So because the ones that it's the except. So we'll cross that off in green. In a lot of other places, people that have played the stations and have played the same kind of music have succeeded, which means with both of us, with people and advertisers. So you can, I mean, the point of similarity is that similar markets are not going to be radically different. So that's also an indicator. This means that, that, that we're not going to listen to it for music. I mean, it's kind of nice how much they help you in this problem. Because when they have these kinds of things, usually when there's an accept type of situation, they'll give you like four things that go the right way and then one that's just sort of irrelevant. But here they actually give you four things that go the right way and one thing that just goes in reverse. It goes the opposite direction. So, I mean, C is basically saying I'm not going to listen to music. I'm less, I'm not very likely, according to this choice to tune in to a music station pretty much across the board. So that's actually the choice I want, but we'll still continue to read from the other perspective as a review thing. Um, D, I don't care as a listener, so it's not really either way. Um, and E says there's not already, in, in terms of explain this to my fourth grader, E says that there's no other station in town that I can already tune into where I can already hear this music. So this is definitely a reason why I would tune into the new station because as it stands right now, there's nowhere for me to go if I want to hear this music. There, there's just no, um, there's no alternative. So it would be a monopoly in the market. So, okay. So JSP, if that makes sense, definitely not irrelevant because we, um, this means that you've got a clean, you got an absolutely open market. Now let's read it from the purple standpoint. You be the advertisers. I mean, the ones we've already eliminated, we don't really need to go through again. But you be an advertiser. So now success means that if we underline this thing in purple, it, it now means something totally different. Someone tell me what this means if you underline it in purple instead of green. Like, what does this mean if you're the advertiser? Yeah, it means you'll get revenue. Like, you'll get business from advertising on the station. So C, again, implies that your target listeners are not even going to tune into the station. So C goes the wrong way for both of you guys. D says that the people who are tuning into the station are ready to spend money, which 
and and are involved in purchases, which means that you this is the prime target for advertisements. Like what basically what D is trying to tell you is that these are the kind of people who will buy things. Which if you are the advertiser is exactly what you want. You want people who will buy things to listen to the station. So and if you go through with both of these perspectives, then we can I mean C is they're being remarkably generous to you here because they give you a choice that is totally counterproductive for both groups instead of just randomly irrelevant. So they're being kind of nice. But if you're going to get a takeaway here, it's you might have to read through it more than once from multiple perspectives. And if you gotta do it, you gotta do it. Okay. Um Rajesh, if the audio is choppy for just you, then no one else seems to be complaining. It must I think it's probably on your end, unfortunately. Um, I, I don't have clue number one how to fix tech problems. Yes, C is the answer number one. Okay. Let's see, let's crank through another one here. How about Something like find one here that we haven't used. How about that? Good shot. All right, let's pick a thing that is a thing pretty soon here. We've already got every answer choice picked at least a couple times, so if you have to guess, then no shame in guessing any particular choice. Okay, so let's talk about it. Who's, whose perspective do you want to think about this from? I mean, again, it should be pretty clear whose perspective is kind of the only one that really matters here. Probably not the doctor. I mean, think about whose life is totally affected and turned upside down by this. I mean, the doctor, if they have a good bedside manner, they're going to care. But, I mean, you, the, the depressed patient is obviously more important here. So, um, unless, yeah, unless everything is dollars and cents, right? So, but, yeah, not, not the doctor's perspective. I mean, the people who, you're talking about people who have severely debilitating mental issues. So, those are the people that we care about. So viewing it from the point of view of the depressed patient, U equals severely depressed prey patient. You know, like full on suicide attempts kind of thing. I mean, personalize that whatever you want. You know, you're Kurt Cobain or something. Um, what is going on here? So the, the words in this paragraph are not as, as convoluted as some of the other passages. But let's take a look at it. So if you skip a night's sleep, your depression goes away. And it goes into remission, so like cancer does. And if you what the alternatives are basically they, they have lots of issues. The alternatives are really bad in other ways too. So basically the depression is really bad and the alternatives are also really bad. So that, that makes this look really good by comparison with what we've been told so far. 
because everything else is really bad. So, basically, right now, this looks good, primarily because everything else looks really bad. Okay, well, and let's color code that to go with the comment. So what are we doing then? I mean, how, if we're going to explain what, if you are the depressed patient, how would you translate these blue words? Yeah, why are you not doing it? Because, I mean, why is it not used as a treatment? I mean, again, assuming at least that the establishment actually wants to help you, which, given the experiences you've had with the U.S. healthcare system, you may not even think that anymore. But let's just think that that's a thing here. So, if the system wants to help you, then why wouldn't you? In other words, like, what, why, what's so bad about this? Or unworkable about this? So, well, I mean, imagine that you are a severely depressed patient. I mean, and, and they tell you. So let's, let's blank out the choices here for just a moment. And let's just think about this. And they tell you, hey, buddy, you can actually make your depression go away completely as long as you don't sleep at all. Where's the problem with that? Yeah, the problem with that is, you know, you, you kind of have to sleep, right? It's a thing. I mean, I, I really wish you didn't, but you do. So, and I mean, just imagine, imagine actually being told that. I mean, like, when I put it in those dialogue kind of words, it's probably really, really obvious what the problem is. You know, but that, that's what this is. You actually want to, because imagine that some doctor is going to come up to you with a straight face and tell you this. And tell you, you know what, man, as long as you just don't do that pesky sleep stuff, then you're not going to be depressed anymore. You're going to be like, dude, well, I have to sleep at some point. So, here, just keep that issue in mind here. So, unworkable. So, A, um, a couple of you picked A. Maybe you just don't know what euphoria means, but euphoria is, is the opposite of depression. Euphoria is like I'm on top of the world, amazing feeling. Um, so, that would be definitely not an argument against this. I mean, a sense of euphoria would be a, a nice added benefit. As long as there's no crazy come down from it, which it doesn't seem to indicate. So A would be a good thing. Not what we want. B says it might be hard to do this, but it's not a downside. It just says that you have some you might have some issues with compliance. But it it doesn't it doesn't argue against. I mean, keeping them awake is difficult, certainly pales in comparison to serious side effects or severely debilitating mental disease. I mean, I, I would take a little bit of difficulty in staying awake over these things if I was the patient. Because that's what B is. I mean, B is basically a value judgment where you just ask yourself, okay, which would I rather have? you know, difficulty staying awake or severely debilitating depression slash serious side effects. I think there's no question who wins that one. Right. I mean, I, I think that I will take a little bit of difficulty in staying awake. So, that's that's 
Yeah, so that's that's what's not what Adam is raising is is the only thing that's not already clear is whether one night's sleep is is the issue or if this is forever. So that that's what's cleared up by one of the choices, which we'll get to. Um, C says prolonged loss of sleep can lead to temporary impairment of judgment. But again, this is the same kind of issue that you're presented with in choice C. You got to ask yourself from the you got to ask yourself from the standpoint of someone with severely debilitating depression, like severely debilitating. You basically cannot live your life, is what severely debilitating means. Your other option is serious side effects of drugs and electric shocks versus, you know, temporary impairment of judgment, like having, you know, being a little bit buzzed. You're you're going to have a hard time arguing that that this is that this is worse. I mean, this this is definitely not as bad as the existing options. So, it's like B. I mean, it's just a thing, and it's not pleasant and totally wonderful, but it's also not nearly as bad as as this or that. Yeah, we're willing, it's a lesser of two evils kind of thing. In this case, it's the, uh, the least of three evils. And then D says we don't know the origins of things, but that doesn't matter because we're only talking about what responds to what and what doesn't. I mean, it, as far as we're concerned, the mechanism could be pure voodoo magic. We don't really care. Like, we don't really care about the why at all. We just care about the what. We just want to know what works, not why. Because honestly, if you can lift their depression, they don't care whether it's brain chemistry or voodoo magic. They don't care. They just want the depression to go away. Yeah, and then there's also a conflict, as Joy points out, there's also a conflict between a night's sleep and prolonged loss of sleep, that those don't really line up. We're, we're not guaranteed that this is going to involve prolonged sleep depression, sleep deprivation. And whereas E says, E confirms that this is not just one night that you have to do. Because, I mean, when you read the original, it's possible that all you have to do is miss one night's sleep, and then you're a happy, smiley person. But E E rules that out. Like E says that this is only a viable treatment for as long as you can stay on zero sleep. So that's what that means. Like as soon like the treatment will only work for as long as you can stay on zero hours of sleep. Which means that it's basically not really a thing. Yeah, it debunks it debunks the idea that it's only one night. It means you're gonna have to do it forever, which just means that it's it's non viable. I mean it's it's a nice it sounds like a nice plan until you realize that. Until you realize that it's not even gonna kick kick in until you're already sleep deprived. And then only then until only as long as you can stay that way. So it's just it's non viable. You can't maintain it. So you're, you're going to still, it, it's not only that E is stronger than A, it's that E means that you're not, the treatment cannot work because you're going to go back to the full force of the depression. So what E means is that you're going to stay awake for longer than you should, you're going to be exhausted, and then as soon as you go to bed, as soon as you crash, you're going to have the old degree of depression back again. It's going to be worse. Like you used to be just depressed, now you're depressed and sleep depressed. Not so hot. So, there you go. Um, again, D, D, D is not because we don't really care about mechanisms, right? We just say that, I mean, mechanisms are not treated here at all. We're just saying there are treatments like drugs and shocks which do some things but do some other things that are bad. We don't, we don't know or care why. And then a study says that when this happens, this happens. We also don't know or care why. Like the origins of stuff are completely irrelevant here. Um, and yeah, Romine also for a small percentage of depressed patients also weakens the force of this. But 
you don't want to weaken the force of A anyway, because A goes the wrong way. I mean, A is A is black when you want white. Like A is actually a positive. So it's good to notice that as well, but the fact that it goes the wrong way already means that we don't even need to go there. But that is also a thing. Mm -hmm. All right, other questions? But it's good to notice those kinds of qualities just in case you should see them in another context. So, yeah. But notice again, notice how much it helps to take on the viewpoint of this person. Like if you are someone who faces a debilitating mental disorder and your only other options are electric shocks or drugs with, with serious side effects, then you're going to be pretty open to things like B and C. That those are going to be fine with you. And you're not going to care about D. You're not going to care about what your textbook says about this stuff. You just want to stop feeling this this way. Like. Yeah, and this sort of thing that Romy raises in the window is an issue. Like you have to be sort of schizophrenic about this. You have to be a different person each time a different perspective is thrown at you. But it happens. I mean, you, you're probably used to that with other tests, too, of just taking on a different kind of thinking when you do that. Um, temporary relief as a... I mean, euphoria is good, right? I mean, euphoria is not bad. Euphoria is good. So... You've got all the stuff you had before about it, plus another positive. I mean, there's, there's no way that you can twist A so that it's a negative. Yeah, okay, it's temporary. Yes, it's temporary, and yes, it's only for a small fraction of people, but it's still good. I mean, you can't, you know, you, you're not going to, you can't argue that a good thing that goes away is suddenly a bad thing. I mean, it's still a good thing. So... Again, just make sure that you you're you're a ten year old here. You're not over analyzing and over twisting and doing multiple steps of reasoning. It, it's you're ten years old. Things are either good or bad, smiley face or frowny face, and that's kind of what it is. Make sure you don't go much past one or two steps of reasoning here. Um, yeah, I mean A is totally a pro, and that's what it is. A pro. You're you're not going to get that to be a top. Because, I mean, like, think about applying that to other analogies. Like, I mean, with that, if, if we're going to reason that way, that would be like saying painkillers are bad because eventually they will wear off and you will feel pain again. I mean, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a logical way of think. I mean, painkillers, if they kill pain, it's good. I mean, everything wears off, sure. Okay. Um, let's kill it. Um, and we're going to do some more of this. We got a few more of these boards. We might, we might even have two more sessions worth of these left in the boards. But um, it seems like it's cool that you guys are in the discussion a little bit more than usual, too. So that's always good. And remember that there are two weeks off after this one. So the next meeting is, I believe, in three weeks from now. So... Um, the 22nd and the 29th are off. So that means it's June, whatever it is, June 5th, June 6th, something like that. And um, as far as practice for critical reasoning, honestly, between the official guide and the, and the GMAT preps, a lot of problems. I mean, if you feel like you need more problems than that, it probably means that you've got a little bit too much quantity and not enough quality going on. Um, and I'd suggest that you revisit the existing official materials. Because it's very hard to find other resources that even sort of kind of approximate the official style and the official way of making problems. It's very hard to find that because they, it's a very specialized undertaking to create those things. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here.